Welcome to Chapter 8, Tapping into Global Markets. In this chapter, we will figure out the following questions. What factors should a company review before deciding to go abroad? How can companies evaluate and select specific international markets to enter? What are the differences between marketing in a developing and a developed market? What are the major ways of entering a foreign market? To what extent must the company adapt its products and marketing program to each foreign country? How do marketers influence country of origin effects? Global competition is intensifying in more product categories as new firms make their mark on the international stage. Competition from developing market firms is also heating up. Although some U.S. businesses may want to eliminate foreign competition through protective legislation, the better way to compete is to continuously improve products at home and expand into foreign markets. Global firms plan, operate and coordinate their activities on a worldwide basis. From figure 8.1, we could see that for a company of any size or any type to go abroad, they must make a series of decisions. Most companies would prefer to remain domestic if their domestic market were large enough. Managers would not want to learn other languages and laws, deal with uh, volatile currencies, face political and legal uncertainties, or redesign their products to suit different customer needs and expectations. Business would be easier and safer. Some companies don't act until events thrust them into the international arena. Others say there are too many risks waiting for them to tackle, as listed in this slide. If any company wants to internationalize, the first task is to move from stage one to stage two. Most firms work with an independent agent and enter nearby or similar country. Later, the firm establishes an export department to manage its agent relationships. Still later, it replaces agents with its own sales subsidiaries in its larger export markets. This increases investment and risk, but also earning potential. Next. To manage its subsidiaries, the company replaces the export department with an international department or division. If markets are large and stable, or the host country requires local production, the company will locate production facilities there. By this time, the firm is operating as multinational and optimizing its sourcing, financing, manufacturing and marketing as a global organization. The company must decide how many countries to enter and how fast to expand. Typical entry strategies are the waterfall approach, gradually entering countries in sequence, and the sprinkler approach, entering many countries simultaneously. Increasingly, firms, especially technology-intensive firms or online ventures, are born global and market to the entire world from the outset. However, much nations and regions integrate uh, their trading policies and standards. Each market still has unique features, readiness for different products and services, and attractiveness as the market depends on the market's demographic, economic, social, cultural, natural, technological, and political legal environments. Many companies prefer to sell to neighboring countries because they understand them better and can control their entry costs more effectively. At other times, uh, psychic proximity determines choices. Given more familiar language, laws, and culture, many U.S. firms prefer to sell in Canada, England, and Australia rather than in larger markets such as Germany and France. Companies should be careful, however, in choosing markets according to cultural distance. Besides overlooking potentially better markets, they may only superficially analyze real differences that put them at a disadvantage. It often makes sense to operate in fewer countries, with a deeper commitment and penetration in each. 
The unmetness of the developing world represent huge potential markets for food, clothing, shelter, consumer electronics, appliances, and many other goods. Many market leaders are relying on developing markets to fuel their growth. The world's largest food company now gets about 40% of its revenue from emerging markets. Developing markets account for about 82% of the world's population, and 90% of future population growth is projected to occur there. Brazil boasts large and well-developed agriculture, mining, manufacturing, and service sectors. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development cautions that economic reforms have stagnated and ranks Russia as one of the most corrupt countries in the world. Many feel the government of Vladimir Putin has been unpredictable and difficult to work with. For these and other reasons, market entry can be daunting. The national government in New Delhi vows to spend $1 trillion on infrastructure over five years. Although, as in many emerging markets, corruption remains a huge problem at virtually all levels of government. A complicated retail network has been slow to modernize, leading to distribution problems. Foreign businesses complain about subsidized competition, restricted access, conflicting regulations, an opaque and seemingly arbitrary bureaucracy, and lack of protection for intellectual property. 90% of PC software is reportedly pirated in China. The Chinese government encourages partnerships with foreign companies, in part so that its firm can learn enough to become global powerhouses themselves. Africa has experienced much change in recent years, although political turmoil in Egypt, um, Tunisia, and Libya during the Arab Spring is a reminder of the instability that has plagued the continent, and logistical and infrastructural problems prevail, improvements in many other areas such as health, education, and social services paint a rosier picture of the continent's future. As to economic Forecasts. McKinsey Global Institute estimates that number of African households with discretionary income, money available to spend on items other than food, is expected to increase by a robust 50% to 128 million people by 2020. Indonesia's reputation as a country historically struggling with natural disasters and terrorism, economic uncertainty, is quickly being replaced by a profile of political stability and economic growth. The fourth largest country in the world and largest Muslim country, given all its progress, Indonesia strikes many as ready to join the BRICS countries. Once a company decides to target a particular country, it must choose the best mode of entry with its brands. Its broad choices are indirect exporting, direct exporting, licensing, joint ventures, and direct investment, shown in figure 8.2. Each succeeding strategy entails more commitment, risk, control, and profit potential. That's what we covered today in the first session of Knowing About Global Market. Next time, we will continue. Thank you.